Good, thank you. I'm glad to see you, not on the camera. I've been seeing all y'all on the camera, which makes me so, it's been making me so happy. I'm like, oh, they're, okay, good. They're there. Nice. I know. I was back in my office watching you all. It, it's not my preference. Yes, yes. And, and Drew got out the Lysol, but like this, she was going like this to me. Presumes these candles will be there. Okay, I'll have David light those. Okay, here's my question. When I get uncomfortable, when I get to coming to our house, I'm not on camera. And I've got plenty of time to get my mask on. It's stressful to me. When I, when I finish, to then put it back on, I'm doing it in a hurry. So I just put it on the table. Yep. When I did
get it or go ahead and give it? I think he... one of us will. remind us that our hope is in Jesus and to watch for his return. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the hope you give us as we worship you this morning. Draw out of us the darkness of the world and fill us with the light of hope. Help us to prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming. We ask in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ Be Our Light. It's found on page, page one of your service bulletin, which can be found on our website, in your e-news from Thursday, and on our Facebook page in a link. Christ Be Our Light. Oh, 
was your gold in sheltering waters, was it a living star? Christ be a light, shine in our hearts, shine to the darkness. Christ be a light, shine in your shirt. gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ be alive, shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. Our service continues with the opening acclamation on page two of your service bulletin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when the fire kindles the brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you, 
who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because we hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us. You have delivered us into the land, into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Here ends the reading.
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading. Our sequence hymn is on page six of your service bulletin, O Day of God, Draw Nigh, page six. not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From a fig tree, learn its lesson. You know, as as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, 
you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. B beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves his home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Remember when it was April? When we got to Palm Sunday in April at the beginning of the pandemic, I thought, okay, God, we can do Holy Week and Easter differently just this one time. And we did. We did. Six of us did Holy Week, six of us did Easter, and it was just fine on our live stream. Then 50 days later, we got to the day of Pentecost. Impossible to believe that the same six of us would gather in this worship space to live stream the service, and the rest of us would gather through a telephone screen or a computer screen to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. What? What were we doing 50 days after Easter, now I railed against God, and I shook my fist, and I think I did it in this building, and I said, what next, God? Are you going to take away Christmas, too? And here we are, on the first Sunday of Advent. Advent, the season of the church year, when we work our way to the commemoration of the coming of the Christ child, to the incarnation, to Christmas Day, as we light those candles on the Advent wreath. Here we are on the first Sunday of Advent, the season of the church year, just four weeks long, when we work our way to the commemoration of the birth of Jesus, the light to enlighten the nations. All this time I have prayed, please, Lord, let our worship return to normal. Please, Lord, let us forget our masks let us gather for worship at St. Richard's Episcopal Church and greet each other with a kiss of peace once more. Please, Lord, let us get back to where we were. But I'm not quite sure that was the right prayer. Because it's clear that we have reached a critical point in the pandemic at least three times. And those critical points have forced us to adapt and change from that 2nd March Sunday 
until today. We have been called as Christians, as worshiping Christians, to cast off the works of darkness that might have us despairing as a community, not able to gather together completely like we used to. But instead, instead of despairing, instead of letting the works of darkness get to us, we have put on the armor of light we have here at St. Richard's Church. We have improved our videos online. We have respected each other as we gather together with masked faces and as we have kept our distance. We have continued to feed the hungry and support those in our community who find themselves jobless through the very generous donations to the discretionary fund. We have persevered in keeping touch with each other through email and phone and text, Facebook even, YouTube. In the first week of the pandemic, the people of St. Richard's realized the need for flexibility and change and the need that we constantly have for maintaining our community in some flexible, creative way. And be flexible and change, we did. We would not and did not let the virus stop us from being the body of Christ at St. Richard's Episcopal Church. And for that, I am grateful that God ignored my railing and gave me the grace to persevere with all of you as we continue to be the body of Christ in Winter Park, Florida. So I give thanks to God because the truth of the matter is nothing has been taken away from us. But what we have received is a new way of life, a new way of life that has been revealed to us through our creative energies in this pandemic. We celebrated the passion and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We celebrated it. We greeted the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost with hopeful hearts, even as we continued our online worship. And we have come through that time that is ordinary in our church calendar, that really was extraordinary in a new way in the season after Pentecost. We safely reopened with an outside service at 8 o'clock to celebrate Holy Eucharist, and now we gather here in limited numbers inside of our worship service to celebrate Holy Eucharist at 1030. We have experienced in our world and at St. Richard's a little apocalypse in our lives as worshiping Christians, and we have answered the call to change and be made new. So today, welcome to Advent. And prepare for Chris Christmas, brothers and sisters. Prepare for Christmas because we have been made new in this mortal life. And we look to being raised to the life immortal as the season of Advent takes us through. Look forward to being raised to the life immortal as we do each and every day being renewed in the midst of of this strange revelation that we need to be creative and constant in our lives as the community of Christ. Our gospel lesson from the Gospel of Mark this morning is fittingly described as the little apocalypse of Mark. That's right, apocalypse. That's a scary word, isn't it? It always is a little bit scary when I hear it for the first time. It has scary connotations for most of us who have lived in the 20th century, Apocalypse Now, remember that movie? And now, those of us in the 21st century. But apocalypse really just means a revealing, a revelation, an uncovering. Apocalypse means there's a process that we go through which God makes, in which God makes things clear to our fearful minds clear to our fearful hearts, clear to our fearful eyes, and makes hopeful and filled with light. Another title appropriately translated for the last book of our Christian Bible is the Apocalypse of John. The Revelation to John, same, same word, the Apocalypse of John. And in the Gospel from Mark that we have today, 
in this little apocalypse, just like other apocalypses, re revelations, there's suffering. I hate that part of it. But there's suffering. Most of the time in our Judeo-Christian scriptures, the suffering that comes with the revelation or that precedes a, a, a revelation from God, the suffering is inflicted on humans by God because we messed up. Let's go through a few of those little apocalypses. The flood, Noah and the flood, in Genesis, the flood comes because the people are corrupt and beyond saving, so God sends a flood. The book of Exodus, the Israelites wander in the desert for 40 years. Was it because they got lost that they wandered for 40 years? No. It was because they were disobedient, and God said, stay out there until you learn your lesson. There is exile to Assyria. There is exile to Babylon. Why? Because the people weren't obeying God. Our scriptures tell us we brought that on ourselves. We even see it in the last part of our reading from Isaiah today. You hid your face because we sinned, God. Let's go back to the Gospel of Mark. The historical context for this portion of Mark's Gospel is very likely the destruction of the Second Temple in the year 70 of the Common Era. I hope that rings a bell to all of you. The destruction of the Second Temple in 70 AD or CE, the Common Era, is a major, a major critical point, a major apocalypse in the life of the Jewish people and of the early Christian church. Remember, Jesus' life is dated to the first 30 years of the first century of the Common Era. Why is that true? Because it's called the Common Era as the calendar was created by a Christian ruler. So time starts all the way over with the birth of Jesus. Jesus lives at a time in Jerusalem when the second glorious Herodian temple stands. When that temple stands and is the center of Jewish worship and Jewish sacrifice. Jesus lives at a time when the Jews are indeed living under Roman rule, but with a bit of autonomy to worship and live as they choose. But they get sick of it. They want more autonomy. The Jews rebel against Rome, and the fierce Roman war machine of first century Palestine destroys the huge, beautiful second temple. The huge Roman war machine kills the Jewish leadership and expels the Jews from Jerusalem. So in and about 70 of the Common Era. Want to talk about a crisis? Want to talk about a little apocalypse? You want to talk about a revelation that life is going to completely change for you now? And if you didn't get it then, you've got to get it now? Because everything is different. And the people have to figure out what to do. And Mark, our gospel writer for this morning, Mark is aware that the people who's probably writing after 70 AD, probably writing um, right in around the time of the destruction of the temple after Jesus has ascended into heaven, Mark is aware that the people who have survived that tribulation, the destruction of their worship space, their destruction of the center of their life and sacrifice, their destruction of the, the, the central place of their religious, whole religious life, Mark is aware that the people who have survived that and are now likely in exile, they are suffering. And Mark wants them to hear a message of hope from Jesus. And so instead of Jesus' voice telling the people, oh, you were wicked, you didn't listen to God, you were sinful, and you deserve what you get from Rome, that's not what Jesus says. Jesus skips that part. And, G and Jesus, through the Gospel writer Mark, tells the people that they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, he will send angels to the ends of the earth and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. He skips the wicked, sinful part and tells the people, I know you have suffered, but a new day has dawned. He tells them 
that the angels will come. Isn't that what we all want to hear at any, any point in our day? You, tell me the angels are coming. That, that, that's happy and hopeful for me. He tells them that the angels will come. He tells them, he tells us, that we will be gathered together from the ends of the earth. And he goes on to even resurrect that poor little fig tree that he cursed and killed earlier in the Gospel of Mark. And it reminds them that we need to keep awake. Be aware, is what Jesus is saying. Open your eyes and keep them open. Don't go back to sleep. Keep awake. Be aware and be grateful for the revelation. Be grateful for the unveiling of suffering so that we might persevere and realize an even more glorious phase of the eternal life that we are living right here and right now. Our eyes have been opened since about the second week of March to a new way of life, a new way of worshiping, a new way of being the church. Our awareness has been heightened, and not just by the virus. And I know, like, the pandemic sermon keeps getting preached and preached and preached, but I cannot preach it because we're still in the pandemic. And if I ignored it, you would be like, what is wrong with her? She's ignoring this pandemic. That's about No, no, I can't. And I remind you a lot, about this a lot. But don't forget, in, in the midst of this pandemic, we have come through an unprecedented hurricane season. Hurricane season that boggles the mind. And for us here in Central Florida, each one of those storms, we had to watch to know where it was going. That would have been enough suffering to come through, to have Jesus say, don't worry, the angels are coming to gather you together. And not only that, but the truth of race relations waking us from sleep this year and the division that now has numbers on it, the division in our nation after our national election, we are awake and must stay that way. We are awake and aware that the change we have been is the change we must continue to be. Keep awake. Remember how rich we are, how flexible we are, how amazing we are. Remember, Jesus gives us peace after the suffering, in the midst of the suffering, and in the midst of change. Jesus gives us life in the midst of the suffering, after the su suffering, and as we continue to be adaptable. Jesus gives us the power to change. Jesus gives us the power to be new. Jesus gives us the power to cast off darkness. And it is Jesus that gives us the armor of life. Put it on, brothers and sisters. Keep awake. Advent is upon us. And let's have an even more glorious Christmas than ever before. Amen. Amen. And now, let us stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 7 of your service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are form two in your Book of Common Prayer on page 385, modified slightly so that they're a bit more relevant to our day and time. This was a suggestion by uh, Bob Vandero, the Reverend Canon Bob Vandero, who's still in Italy, who we say hello to Bob. Uh, we took his suggestion and modified the Form 2 prayers just slightly. In this time of uncertainty, I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Greg and Terry, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. In this time when we need global cooperation more than ever, I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. In this time of multiple challenge, challenges we endure as a result of the coronavirus, I ask your prayer, prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. In this time of anxiety, when so many are groping for relief, I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and he may and be found by him. In this time when so many have died, I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for Bob, John, Joan, and Matthew, Hector, Sheila, Alex, Kay, Larry, Sandy, Maggie Kay, Val, Meredith, Ray, Ted, Hazel, Stan, and Jenny. And for family and friends, Tara, Fernando, and Clara, Mr. Costello, John, Teresa, Christine, Randy, Anthony, Maggie, Cynthia, Leo, Wendy, Tim, Barbara, Shirley, Caleb, Kelsey, Suzanne, Rose, Pat, the Donahue family, Sheila, Naomi, Mary, Marty, Bridget, Anne, Christy, Ruperto, Neil and Andrew's mom, Helen, Chuck, Hector, Alma, Don, Sarah, Laureen, Sarah, Emma, and Rachel. And we pray for teachers, first responders, our military personnel, healthcare workers, and others that we name. I ask your thanksgiving for those having birthdays, Victor Griffith, Kay Davidson Bond, Robin Labreck, Kay Wolf. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in the midst of crisis and be joyful and hopeful today, tomorrow, and every day. Hasten, O Father. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, May, be, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only 
mediator, and advocate. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace be with you here at St. Richard's Church. About 20, 25 of us gathered here today. Peace be with you out there in, uh, in uh, the land of online worship. We're so glad to be with you. We continue with our offertory sentence, and I ask you if you will just stick around for a little bit after the, the communion part of the service. We'll have a few announcements. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Mm-hmm. 
finest fire, the very finest fire. And who shall stand when he, when he appeareth? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and who shall stand when he appeareth? When he appeareth? For he is like a Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on th page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer and on page 9 of your service bulletin. <coughs> Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people in your word, spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. 
We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Richard, St. Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
change it up a little bit and switch from our page 365 shorter post-communion prayer to the longer version on page 366. That prayer is found on page 13 of your service bulletin. Let us pray and give thanks together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And some special Advent uh, blessings that we find in our uh, book of occasional services or our Enriching Our Worship, some wonderful liturgical resource of the Episcopal Church. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory, we awake, we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our post-communion hymn is Lo, He Comes with cloud descend Clouds Descending, page 13 of your service bulletin.
are working hard on getting you to hear that organ online, just so you know. Uh, we're working hard on making sure you can hear all the music, which in the church, if, as you've experienced, no doubt, is, is always glorious and amazing. And thank you for on this first Sunday of Advent, Dr. Maltzby, for putting all our public domain and licensed music online. We're so grateful for it. This week has been the week of the senior warden, Kay Wolf, who is a force to be reckoned with, had her birthday, had Thanksgiving with her son in Gainesville, and put on a wedding for her daughter. The flowers today, which are indeed flowers, hydrangeas, that almost match our vestments perfectly, are given to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for the marriage of Jessica Strait and Jordan Albright by Kay Wolf, our current senior warden here at St. Richard's Church. Congratulations, congratulations, Jessica and Jordan. We love you and honor you here at St. Richard's Episcopal Church. This week, we've got a lot coming up. The service of Blue Christmas will be next Sunday at 5 p.m. We will have limited in-person in seating here in the church at 5 p.m., and it will also be live streamed. This is our service that we um, use to commemorate those we love but see no longer. It's very difficult at the holidays if you've lost somebody you love who's usually there at Christmas time and Thanksgiving. And so indeed we celebrate that, we commemorate that, and we honor that with a beautiful service. Cindy Bohr will be here to uh, play and I'll be here to officiate that service. Sign up on our Eventbrite um, page if you want to come in person, otherwise it will be live streamed. Family Promise Host Week comes up December 6th. That's next Sunday as well. We start our Family Promise Host Week. Kay Wolf will let me know this week who we need and what we need to do. We're just cooking meals and delivering them for the families that are still staying in hotels um, with Family Promise and probably will be staying in hotels through the first part of 2021. So our ministry to our um, homeless pop population in Central Florida is meals only at this point. Christmas. Tonight. Tonight. Instead of seeing an incomplete version of the School of St. Richard's Advent Lessons and Carols, you will be seeing a complete version of Evening Prayer Rite 1 with me from my home at 5 o'clock live streamed. And then as soon as the Advent Lessons and Carols with Dr. Carl Maltzby and School of St. Richard's is perfect, you will see that online, on Facebook, and on our YouTube page. As soon as it's perfect, we will let you know when it becomes available, as soon as we know when it's perfect. Christmas Eve at St. Richard's will be 7 p.m. It will be a, a um, live streamed and limited in-person seating. That Eventbrite sign-up is not yet available. I'm going to do that this week. So please go to our website and you will see the, the place where you can register to attend um, Christmas Eve at St. Richard's in person at 7 p.m. on December 24th. We have, it's going to be big Christmas, as I, as I preached about. It's going to be Christmas as usual at St. Richard's in terms of its glorious music and um, beautiful worship. And it will also be, be live streamed. So don't worry if you can't get here in person. Uh, we'll still live stream it, and it will be beautiful for you too. And then on Christmas Day at 1030 a.m., we will have only in-person worship outside as we've been doing our 10, our 8 a.m. service for the last several months, not live stream. So Christmas Eve, online, Christmas Day, um, you just show up. No registering necessary because we're outside and we spread out. And now, the Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you. 